So good afternoon. Welcome to this sixth session of the D1 of Sorbonne University Abu Dhabi and CIFREPA, the new name of CEFAS, an acronym for Centre de Recherche Française sur la Péninsule Arabique, French Research Center on the Arabian Peninsula. Our guest tonight is Dr. Marion Bruteau, who is Assistant Professor of Anthropology at the University of Kuwait. She is also a research member of IDEMEC Laboratory in Aix-en-Provence, France, and an associate researcher with CIFREPA. Dr. Marion Bruteau defended her PhD in social and cultural anthropology in 2019 on love in Muscat, spaces, gendered roles, and representations of intimacy among young people. She has published on the topic of encounters between genders and youth culture in Oman, and her latest paper is entitled, When Love is Neither Showing Nor Giving, The Challenges of Valentine's Day in Oman, in Kaposi and Vosimit's recent volume dedicated to quotidian youth cultures in the Gulf Peninsula, changes and challenges. Marion will be uh, speaking today about life course, city course, local cosmopolitan, oh, that's the word that I never can pronounce right. Local cosmopolitanism seen by youth in Oman, offering perhaps a different take on cosmopolitanism than what we heard during the last session from Delphine El Karawi on Dubai cosmopolitanism. Why did I put so many cosmopolitanism in this presentation? Since, as Marion phrases it, the Omani capital is distinguished from other cities in the Gulf region as it rather tends to illustrate a form of local cosmopolitanism. Besides the numerically lower presence of foreign populations, the concentration of activities that take place in Muscat makes it a synonym for promises for the future for many young people from the interior regions who come to study and to find their first job afterwards. By observing the studying period, friendships, and amorous encounters among young people in Muscat, Oman, this presentation aims at analyzing how regional identities are reformulated through the prism of local cosmopolitanism, oh, that was not bad, addressed as a specific feature of youth in Oman. Dr. Marion Bruteau will speak for about 45 minutes, following which we will start the questions and debate section of this Diwan. You can send questions in advance via the conversation window on Zoom webinar, and we will give you the opportunity to speak directly with our guest. And now it is time for you, Marion, to speak. Thank you, Frédéric, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I would first like to thank the Sorbonne Abu Dhabi, of course, and the CFEPA to have given me this opportunity. And Frédéric, uh, again, in particular, uh, has, has been very helpful in the organization of this event. Um, I will first uh, share my screen so that everything is set up from the beginning. Okay. So as Frédéric said, my talk will introduce a research I conducted between 2013 and 17 in Muscat when I was conducting my PhD research. Uh, this research um, focused on love relationships and representations among young adults in Oman, which led me to think and build a complementary reflection on the notion of youth in this country and more particularly in Muscat, that is the urban area of a capital city. The city of Muscat uh, counts 3, millions, uh, 3 million inhabitants and the overall country of a majority of population between 15 and 30 years old. University can be taken as the main place for observing such a period of a lifetime. Uh, universities in Oman have actually developed in Muscat for the most part, counting a total of approximately 30 universities and colleges all over the country, and 20 of them are uh, in Muscat. <clears throat> As you can see on the map, uh, the black circles represent the different places where they are located in the country. Some are located in Mizwa, in the Dakhiliya, close to Muscat, 
Sohar in the north, uh, Salala in the southwest, and Sur in the southeast. The geographical repartition of universities and colleges induces that many students enroll in, this, uh, in those located in Muscat, as it will host people from most of the northern regions of the country that correspond also to the most inhabited parts of Oman after uh, Muscat uh, governorate. Consequently, Muscat, uh, as I will emphasize, uh, Muscat study time and its subsequent relation with uh, youth building tend to develop in connection with each other. Indeed, a large part of the people I met uh, were not from Muscat originally, and the different structuring of their daily life lead me today to reconsider the notion of cosmopolitanism that I also struggle to pronounce as addressed in social sciences. Uh, this term applied to the Omani context indeed raises questions. So as uh, Frédéric said, the last D1 was focusing on that dimension with the talk of Delphine and Karoui who developed it um, in the Emirates. Indeed, this term could be much more appropriate uh, to describe context uh, in which a great diversity of national, ethnical, and however social belongings uh, meet. These are conditioned by a world of uh, borders, as uh, Michel Agier and others um, developed, that bring identities to be defined by such a contour cutting and giving the importance to nations in their structuring, which also asks for caution towards the use of categories for naming identities. It also refers to uh, a certain lifestyle, uh, as Amélie Le Renard exposed in her work uh, on a Western expatriate in Dubai. She showed that French expatriates, uh, and more particularly those with foreign origins, consider their settlement in Dubai as a way to tend for more equal treatment. Diversity becomes the feature of an identity or lifestyle they now embody once in Dubai. They can melt into the masses as these are diverse, which can also make the phenomenon considered as a mode of integration into society. The notion of canopy as developed by American anthropologist Elijah Anderson is also a way to address this phenomenon. Uh, Applied to the North American context, this term is defined as spaces that gather individuals from very various origins, cultural, religious features, who do not, do not have the occasion to be gathered as elsewhere and otherwise because of the compartmentalization of the communities among the population. Um, one can indeed think of a city, a capital, or uh, a shopping mall, for example. Um, which has been uh, observed uh, in some works uh, with the notion of a canopy. Muscat in comparison with the Emirati cities and uh, what one would consider as a cosmopolitan city does not gather all the required elements normally expected to be considered as such. Indeed, there are much less diverse populations in terms of nationality as the half of the population is foreigner when in the other Gulf countries, these are sometimes more than 70 to 80, 90% of it. But the notion of being a foreigner in Muscat appears to be analyzed, um, and this is what I will do, on a smaller scale. To be cosmopolitan, a place or a phenomenon would also tend to be associated to another element. The feeling of encountering the radical otherness. In other words, can a place or a practice be defined as cosmopolitan as long as it gathers features of complete differences, people from radical origins? Hence, what scale should be used to qualify this radicality? What remains to qualify it, uh, to qualify Muscat as a cosmopolitan then is the very interactional uh, aspect of social life occurring there. What also matters, as we can see in Anderson's definition of the canopy, is that the people gathered uh, would tend to be in relations of power or holding heterogeneous kinds of power. Being gathered by a common practice or in the same space, hence help individuals uh, position themselves, experience their privileges or precariousness on the contrary, 
in the very moment of the interaction. By this, I mean that, for example, uh, privileges can appear through symbolic aspects of bodily habitus, gestures, behaviors, ways of speaking, uh, ways of dealing with, with the others. This idea of uh, the heterogeneity of power is, um, can also be found in Anouk de Koning, who observed uh, cosmopolitanism in Egypt as a lifestyle also for a purpose to distinguish or stand out socially. As analyzed in Abu Dhabi, a large part of youth is what one could uh, call the second generation of Arab migrants, or what Lor Asaf named Arab youth. That is, youth who were born either in their parents' country, either in the Emirates, having lived their life in Abu Dhabi while holding their parents' nationality. This in the Gulf uh, makes a great difference and a great particularity as a person and a legend on the legal and ordinary, ordinary life levels rests on this very uh, specificity. In this configuration, uh, otherness is also a nuanced one, as these Arab youth uh, develop a social life and identities on the basis of what I would name uh, Arabness, whatever the national uh, origin. So if cosmopolitanism refers to evolving in an environment defined by radical orderness, as it could take, pl take place in Abu Dhabi, there's also an effect of recomposing identities on the basis of common features. At the end, what makes um, these youth cosmopolitan individuals is that this recomposition occurs by the intervention of indeed also very different and outground international belongings and practices in their daily life by the presence of uh, an imposing diversity. Other dimensions, such as the variety of legal status, make individuals live as foreigner in their own city uh, always, which is another aspect to take into account in the Emirates uh, context. With that in mind, cosmopolitanism is in Maskrat, uh, rather what I will call a local one, and it induces similar dynamics uh, of identity recomposition in an environment of diversity, but on a very local, regional level among the national population. Universities are a telling example, as I said, for observing the repartition of the population in terms of national belongings and could eventually uh, refer to the notion of canopy too. Uh, foreign students are few. Uh, they can they can't, uh, enroll in universities if they do not hold scholarships and specific agreements. And as a consequence, the student population is rather made of Oman people, and for the most part, who come from the interior, the other areas than Muscat, that I will now call the interior uh, regions. The reason is indeed, uh, the few prisons of colleges back there. And in addition, many of them face the issue of not being accepted in the university program of their choice in their own uh, city, which brings them uh, to Muscat. Most of them attend bachelor degrees and an obvious difference happens between girls and boys at their arrival. Some campuses provide with accommodation as it's the case for uh, SQU, the Sultan Qaboos University, the main university public one of the country, but only for faculty staff and female students. These are collective dormitories uh, and buses would drive them from their dorm to the main center of the campus, even though these are not too far uh, by foot. Girls can leave the campus by respecting a curfew, a curfew time those who live in dorms uh, are for the most part girls who are originated from the rural uh, areas. The girls I met would come back to their home city every weekend if they were from close regions such as Dakhiliya, uh, while others were staying longer as their family lived uh, far away uh, from Muscat. <clears throat> Those who do not uh, have the possibility to be accepted in the campus's uh, dorms uh, live in shared flats close to the university. Uh, and one can see on the map that the area of Al-Khoud uh, in purple uh, on the map, 
it's a, it's a recent neighborhood uh, still under construction is made actually um, of a lot of flats occupied by students. That is the closest from SQU, that's in, uh, that is in yellow on the map. This area remains quite separated from the original uh, neighborhood, hood in, which is in, in red on the map. Uh, this, this red spot is the, is the zone where they can provide themselves with grocery and other services. Um, in addition, the Rode Sarisa, the Rode 6, uh, is also close to another area, which is uh, the green one, uh, where the COM, uh, Knowledge Oasis Moscat, uh, a business incubator, and two, others, uh, two other colleges are located, as well as uh, student flats. The COM, the Knowledge Oasis Moscat, hosts uh, fresh graduates for internships and various programs for youth integration into the job market which makes this area as a whole a concentration of youth professional, professional activities. This picture is the main road that brings to El Hood 6 on the left and SQU further on the right. And here, uh, this picture shows the neighborhood of El Hood 6, El Sadisa. Um, and we can see alternate, uh, alternates between private houses uh, and on the main road in the background, residential buildings where dormitories are located. Some share flats uh, are formalized, uh, those for women, for example, meaning that they would have a curfew to respect and a caretaker who is in charge of the housing organization. Excuse me, Marion, uh, the slide is slightly on the side. Yes, this is perfect. Thank you. Sorry for interrupting you. And now, how about now? Is it fine? Yes, it's perfect. Good. As for the male side, dorms are reserved uh, for girls on the campuses, as I said. So the, the, the boys that I met lived in shared flats, also in this neighborhood, but these uh, were more informal, as these were groups of friends often taking a flat together and sharing the expenses. So when the young adults coming from the rural areas arrive in, in Moscat, they first have to deal with this very concrete aspect of life, dealing with everyday life by themselves, having to find a flat, to cook for themselves, to take care of their laundry, deal with other peers in their accommodation and <laughs> eventually study. So the dimension I want to draw your attention on is that these steps into the world occur in the very specific social fabric of Muscat. First, in terms of gender matters, uh, as illustrated by the housing issue, Muscat represents for most of them a possibility to get extracted from environments that are much not uh, non-gender mixed. As a female student stated to me, university was a big jump in her life. Uh, as she had to deal with other men than her own male family members. She found this was providing her with confidence and, and knowledge to cope with the fear she would previously feel while interacting with men. On this picture, uh, we can see SQU graduation day. Uh, men and women are separated from each other, uh, with a woman on the left and men on the, on the, on the back, on the right. Although the, the crowd is big, a separation is explicitly marked between men and women. Opportunities of encounters are obviously determined by situations uh, such as that illustrated here. Even though social life remains uh, quite non-mixed gendered in the mascot, another element um, helps to reconsider how we pass this, uh, which is also the separation from the students' families as they remain in the countryside. To give you the illustration of a situation back in the countryside, um, a 25 years old female student I met living and studying in uh, Nizwa University would have to go to, to university on the daytime. She would come back right after and home and deal with the cooking, the cleaning, and help her younger brothers uh, for their homeworks. When she was late, her mother would call her to ask for coming back home. She was the eldest of her siblings and the only one having her driving license. Her father was working in Moscot during the weekdays, 
which made her responsible to bring her mother to the grocery shop and other uh, places whenever needed. And she was also the taxi driver for her female fellows uh, she was bringing at university. So the driving license is indeed a great step into uh, more responsibilities, which marks in the countryside, as in Muscat, uh, the entry into adulthood. But those who come from the countryside and study in Muscat would be kind of uh, freed from such responsibilities as those as described by this uh, Dakhiliya girl. They would rather have uh, frequent phone calls with their families, for example, until they come back um, in the weekend. Studying in Muscat indeed changes the relations between these interior young adults and their families. Girls' responsibility uh, would rather be up to their male siblings if they had some already living in Muscat. This is what another person, originated from Liwa in the north of the country, explained to me. This is because her older brother was already studying in Muscat that her family enabled her to go study there. Moreover, because this was at the same university as him. She would stay at the campus dormitory when her brother was staying in a shared flat with my friends in Al Khoudis 6. As I said, so. Conversely, her brother told me his family was expecting more from him uh, than if he stayed in the countryside. His family paid him driving lessons and a car so that he can drive he, her sister to places in case of need in Muscat and to have them come back every weekend in Liwa. This duty was felt as a constraint for him, as he put it, as something he would not have done before her sister starts uh, studying in Muscat. And also because he would come back to his family uh, only every one or two months before. Here is the campus of Sultan Qaboos University with a student event on the left uh, and uh, one of the, sun, uh, which is in, on the, in the, um, one of the central free zones of the campus and the library on the right. In addition, when they arrive in Muscat, these rural youth are introduced to the city either by friends and people from the same regions uh, who already live there. They build stronger uh, friendships with them as this was the case for the brother and sister I mentioned earlier. But as university is also made of many other belongings in terms of population, they develop a new understanding of identity that occurs as being uh, regional. Many girls would share their rooms in the dorms with others who come from opposite regions. They then develop understandings of identity that would involve religious, tribal, or even ethnic features. Indeed, many youth from the north and south are Sunni, while those from the interior, uh, Dakhiliya, are Ibadi, as most Muscatis uh, are. They learn how to position themselves and realize the diversity that surround them. For the students I met, uh, Muscat they gave them the impression, I quote, to travel in Oman from the city. Female, for, female students, for example, would mention the experience of cooking together uh, in the dorms and discover new habits. A spe specific example is that of uh, ethnic belongings. In Muscat, they would meet people who are Lawati, who, who are Shia, and uh, Baluchi, who are Sunni, to make it short, communities that would find their origins in the modern Iran. The Swahili communities are, are another interesting example. They are Ibadi and live in Muscat for the majority, and kept uh, ties with the African countries their ancestors would have occupied for the two to three past centuries. Their ties uh, with East Africa are still vivid and maintained until today. So interior youth realize the relations Oman holds or would have hold in the past abroad, providing them with a larger scope of their own country. As they speak uh, Swahili, which is an entire different language, they would share and have the others discover the, the, their dialects as interior students would also do regarding their, all, uh, their own regional dialect uh, with one another. Taking into account the new independence and social fabric they live in once in Muscat, some youth develop more amorous uh, relations. Their Muscati fellows would have more difficulties uh, setting up dates and encounters as they can meet people they know or family members in the public spaces. On the contrary, 
those from the countryside uh, leave it more freely regard this domain. And to quote the brother I mentioned before, what happens in Muscat um, stays in Muscat. A student, another one originated from Liwa, for example, described to me how university and his overall settlement in Muscat gave him the opportunity to meet girls for the first time. And he put it in a way as if Muscat was not only a city or a space, but an experience, that of the first experiences for the entry into adulthood. As he took a position in student associations, he would meet girls for study matters, but he also managed to go out frequent coffee shops and organize rendezvous and encounters outside the campus. Most of the girls he met were also from other areas. Because an implicit attitude of self-control led him to have more interactions uh, with girls who then are not from the same region as him, so that he could be sure his activities and encounters and those of the girls would not be known banned back in Liwa in the north in his city. As he stated, uh, what matters was the potential consequence of his behaviors on his family reputation back in the city, which shows again how ties would eventually exceed the definition of Muscat as a space only. These relations uh, can end up into marriage, um, which asks the question of this youth and courage in space for their family to be and their future. The case of Ahmed and Fatima, as I will describe, uh, shows how regional belongings find themselves uh, redesigned through the experience of marriage and, um, let's say, Muscati experience. Ahmed is Ibadi and comes from the region of Batna in the north, and Fatima is from the Sharqiya in the south, and she is a Sunni. As they met at their workplace in Muscat, Members of Ahmed's family stated to me that such an alliance would only be possible thanks to the Muscati experience. Following Ahmed's family practices, the wedding and other parties related to their marriage occurred in his hometown in Rostak uh, in the north. Fatima's family then accepted that condition because they also considered that a woman uh, should settle at her husband's place once married. For both the, their family, the marriage expenses should be on the husband's one. Nevertheless, Fatima's one family accepted participating in, uh, in the costs. Um, the closest members of her family rented a minibus to travel from Sur in the south to Rostock uh, in, in the north. The bride's family decided to hire a group of female musicians in order to ensure having some of their own musical preferences uh, represented at the wedding. The group came from Sur and traveled with the family members. On the night of the wedding day, um, sitting on the ground, the musicians kept their veils covering their hair their faces for some of them, and their uh, abayas, the black robes. During the evening, my interlocutors, who were uh, all cousins and family members of the groom, complained about the music they found backward. As they were explaining to me, they insisted on the old-fashioned aspect of the songs, as well as the fact of uh, hiring such a woman, and the fact that these women were uh, wearing abayas and, uh, and, uh, and burqa on, this, on their face. They added that they would have preferred recording music. Uh, in other words, musical hits that are Golfian, Levantine, or Egyptian, as these are more often found uh, in weddings. Uh, so this is actually a video. So please excuse me because I'm not a camera woman and very bad in taking pictures, but this was just to give you a small taste of what I'm uh, describing to you. So the depreciation of the musical style by the use of the term retarded, uh, backward, old fashioned, continued during the lunch occurring the next day at the parents' home of the groom where the couple would settle. The young bride was dressed uh, in an outfit from the Sharqiya that is composed of uh, pants or sarwal with ankle cuffs embroidered with silver or metal, 
a waxed robe and a black embroidered overdress or a thug. My interlocutor again told me how ugly she found this dress while the groom's cousins agreed. Here is the dress. Uh, on the right picture, you can see other embroideries that are on the backside. These dresses are heavy to wear as they are woven with the silver threads and uh, the fabric of the first layer is waxed without mentioning uh, the numerous uh, gold head jewelry and, and necklaces. As everybody was eating in the different living rooms uh, of the house, the bride was sitting in the corner of one of them um, next to her mother and sisters. She was hardly approached uh, by the others who were all members of her husband's family. Around me and in the other rooms, the groom's mother and cousins were on criticism again. Not only the dress was different from what they were used to seeing, but the most shocking for them was the presence of her mother and sisters. Indeed, this day, also called the Sabahiyya, marked the separation between the bride and her own family. From that day and for a period of a few days to a week, the brides are waited to remain separated from their own family to stay there and try into a new one. Indeed, this could not happen as Fatima, the bride, uh, came to celebrate her marriage with her family, Torostak, and they would not leave from the very next day as they need a whole day to, to travel, to come and go back. As the bride was showing shyness and reserve, another girl close to me added that uh, the bride's family wanted to practice the public menstruation of the couple's blood-stained bedsheet as a sign of virginity. This practice would have been strongly refused by the groom's family. And my interlocutor told me this was a tradition that one could not see in the Batina, in the northern region. For her, the reason is related to each religious confession that dominates in the two regions at play in this marriage. As the Batina is Ibadi, my interlocutor insisted that Ibadism was way more conservative, that she explained to me as something that would ensure respect for the couple's privacy by not showing the bridal uh, bedsheet. For her, this practice was Aib, that is embarrassing and indecent. She added that she was proud to be Ibadi for this reason, as this was a tolerant confession, hence proud to be from al Batina, because uh, this is the cradle of Ibadism in, in Oman, and to be uh, from the city of Rostak. Indeed, this city was one of the historical capitals of the Ibadi Imamate uh, before its consolidation uh, with the Sultanate. The case of Ahmed and Fatima illustrates how ways of thinking and acting were felt as diametrically opposed, but also how practices and habits are confronted as they managed at the end to find common grounds for certain aspects of the marriage organization. Nevertheless, that their encounter could not have taken place uh, in other, any other context uh, than Muscat. And according to the remarks of the guests, it would not make sense given the cultural or rather moral uh, content of their uh, different religious affiliation. This example is very specific to this generation compared to the parents level and new as uh, such a face-to-face -face, uh, seemed to be uh, so new and unusual for, to everyone. It shows that identities are also reframed by research for humanity or humaniness in accordance with the Ibadi reference, which is the uh, official religious affiliation of Oman, often mentioned to be at the source of tolerance that is advanced as an Omani specificity or trademark in terms of um, national religious ethos. What takes place in the discovery of uh, different habits and practices in which an Omani identity sort of uh, aura is laid, inlaid, as grown by political narratives and triggered by the polarizing and centripetal effect of the capital city. Individuals reconsider their symbolic powers to, positions, uh, to position themselves vis-a-vis -vis the national identity and the idea of what, um, could name, of what one could name the national otherness. They would associate uh, regional identities with religious and ethnic features an assembling they would not do uh, if they didn't experience it pragmatically. 
Of course, today the time is temporary, which is why cosmopolitanism and its very local uh, version, as I put it here, meets other limitations to be applied to muskrats, because this would rather prefer, um, refer to a lifetime period than a short one. But as study, uh, study time is also the one during which they start building their professional projects, interior youth start developing their network in the capital. Some would first uh, face difficulties as they do not know much people and would return to the home city, uh, also in case they are promised uh, from marriage to someone back there. A great difference remains between them and the Muscatis uh, in terms of uh, the job market. They sometimes would face discrimination as their family name, their accent and dialect, for example, can easily uh, help to recognize their region of origin. The employers uh, would evaluate their encourage into the Moscati network and their relations, as they would rather favor a candidate that would have been recommended by someone they know, or that they would be able to situate in their own uh, network. Nevertheless, the more students uh, spend time in Muscat, um, the more they face uh, the risk of crumbling their relations uh, in their own region. Eventually, interior people would keep a foot, both in the countryside and in Muscat, by, for example, working in the capital and visit their family in the weekend. While they continue the course of their life in Muscat, they keep feeding their regional identity because of their relations back there, either by choice or by uh, constraint. In the end, Muscat turns up into being kind of a laboratory in which identities are reframed and overall a place where omaniness is experienced, both in a sense of uh, homogenization and diversification. Discussing the Muscati context in the light of cosmopolitanism is eventually a way to distinguish phenomena between this one and that of the simple, uh, simply mixing effect of urban spaces. But it, it's also a way to reconsider the now classical terms addressed to the Arabian uh, Peninsula, as these are quite often associated with extreme urbanity and uh, multiculturalism, which tends to favor the capitals to illustrate and to represent the Arabian Peninsula and the Gulf at the expense of the countryside and average uh, cities. Although Muscat uh, shares common features, this is to be reminded that images and analysis largely addressed to the Gulf could not be confirmed if there was an exception. And Muscat is actually the exception that helps um, to disprove the rule. If Muscat uh, is not cosmopolitan for the reason that it gathers belongings uh, defined by a national frame only, this could hence help bring necessary nuances to the very notion of Gulf as an homogeneous cosmopolitan hub which is what I put uh, now as a question and uh, an opening for potential remarks. And this is pretty much what I wanted to tell you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Marion. Um, right. I just wait for you to stop. Yeah, perfect. Excellent. Um, so uh, I think Laurent had a first question. I have questions of my own but I will uh, leave the floor to Laurent for his first question. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, Marion, for this uh, very interesting uh, endeavor into your, uh, your research. Um, I wanted to know um, if you were able to grasp what is the effect of um, experiences abroad by, uh, by students. Uh, of course, much like in the Gulf, um, the Omani government has uh, stressed the importance of sending a number of uh, students away uh, and is giving uh, funding for that. Um, and uh, experiences abroad, particularly in, in the UK, I think, uh, is, uh, is obviously uh, uh, transformative for many of them, uh, giving access to other, other uh, lifestyles um, although I've recently, I can't remember exactly where I saw that, but it was an op-ed which was published just a few few days ago uh, in uh, in the UAE, uh, which sort of was critical of the fact that uh, as they were going abroad, the Gulf students sort of um, 
recreated a small gulf um, and were thus not benefiting from the experience fully, uh, meaning that uh, when they were in the UK, basically they would not necessarily uh, uh, speak in English, they would not interact with, uh, with foreigners, um, which in the OPED was, was considered as a, something which was negative because it, it stated that uh, if the governments were funding um, experiences abroad, uh, the reason for that was not only that uh, the, the, the students would have themselves a new kind of a new experience, but that they would also be uh, sort, so to speak, ambassadors of, uh, of um, Gulf societies of their own, uh, their own countries abroad, uh, showing uh, a positive image of that. Um, and I wonder if you've had any uh, any feedback on these uh, on these kinds of uh, experiences, which I, which I think were probably the most uh, uh, direct types of confrontation to a, a cosmopolitan uh, experience. Thank you, Laurent, for the question. Yeah, indeed, it, what you are seeing reminds me of this article from Claire Beaugrand, who analyzed. Uh, um, the girls, Omani girls experience uh, at university, and I can't remember where, I think it was in Sharjah, or, or maybe in oh, it Dubai. Was in, in it was in Kuwait. In Kuwait, in Kuwait. Yes. Yeah, and, and, and indeed she, she, she developed that very point of uh, recreating their own world and not necessarily opening to, uh, to, to the outdoor one. Uh, from what I could grasp from my own field work is um, kind of a difference uh, always <laughs> between uh, girls and boys. Um, some boys explained to me how they could uh, have these scholarships from, uh, from the Omani government, as you mentioned, and uh, they would travel to uh, the US. Uh, I have in mind two of them. And they were more talking to me about this experience as um, a place where they, they would uh, do all what they couldn't have uh, done in, uh, in Oman, meeting girls uh, for the first time. Um, also, um, there's that case of this student that also uh, did kind of a buzz on the internet um, because he decided to work at Starbucks. <laughs> uh, although he, he had uh, enough funding to, to, to live um, appropriately, but he wanted to he wanted to confront himself, uh, himself with the way his uh, American fellows uh, were living. So this is why he decided to take this uh, this job, and um, this this had him uh, confront himself uh, to many other things um, regarding his own society. Uh, as what he explained, he he did a Twitter uh, post about the topic, and he was. Uh, interviewed by um, many other Gulf uh, radios and, um, and uh, YouTube uh, channels. He explained that for him, it, it helped him understand how uh, finally, um, eventually that his own society was uh, kind of compartmentalized uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, job, uh, um, job market um, issues uh, regards the nationality and, uh, and so on because um, if he was in Oman, he would have never done such an experience. Uh, as for the girls, uh, those, are, those that I met, but, but I don't know if, it's, uh, if it can be generalized, but those that I met were, would rather travel uh, in Europe. Um, I particularly think of uh, England or um, Germany or um, Cyprus. Uh, and those that I met again um, traveled there only if one of their family members was already studying or working there. Um, for example, one girl was studying in Cyprus um, and she did it because her two, stu two, two brothers uh, were already studying there and once she had an opportunity to have a scholarship in Turkey, she had to cancel it because no one was uh, uh, willing or unable to uh, to follow her uh, there. So this is pretty much uh, it, what I can uh, say about this topic. Thank you very much. Uh, our next question will be from Aurélien Coelard. Uh, Aurélien, can you open your mic? Hey, yes, thank you so much. Uh, very, very interesting to be honest with you. Um, uh, I'm not anymore in UAE. I used to live in, uh, in Dubai and uh, during four years. I'm not in a uh, the Middle East anymore. 
and I was subscribing to the to the Sorbonne newsletter, and when I saw this uh, this conference, I was very interested, so so I joined, and I uh, listened very carefully to to you. Thank you so much, Marion, for for the speech. Um, I was just wondering, like, how is it possible that you you succeed to have interaction with uh, so easily with so many students uh, in Oman? From my experience, I stayed four years in UAE. I succeeded to have one friend, which is local, but it was not in Dubai, it was in Ras al-Khema. And I think the, 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 maybe the mindset of the Emirati between Ras al-Khema and, and Dubai, it's, it's a bit different. And it was easier for me to, to interact with him. But I was wondering, like, I'm so surprised, but positively surprised, huh? but uh, you had the opportunity to interact with so many people, so many students. Uh, that they, they, they talk with you openly about their feelings and everything. So I would just uh, wanted to know, like, how did you do? And do you think the same uh, kind of work and uh, uh, deep dive session and deep dive talk that you had with the people in Oman could have be the same in other regions, such as uh, Saudi Ar Arabia or um, uh, United Arab Emirates? Uh, that's interesting because I wanted to start my, my talk about that dimension because, uh, as I said, my main topic was love relations. And in anthropology, the main uh, methodology is a participative participant observation. And if you want to, to, uh, to use this method uh, for a topic such as love, this would have meant uh, many things that, uh, of course, uh, I didn't do, like falling in love with someone, following uh, following lovers, or uh, observing, or rather spying lovers uh, in parks, for example. So this is actually why I try to uh, to adapt uh, this methodology uh, by actually trying to find uh, ways and places to to follow these youth uh, lives, and then gather as a secondary way of uh, observing this very topic of love. So, so in the first, uh, on, in the first uh, times, I was actually uh, indeed related to and associated to uh, expatriates or Western places and uh, activities, but this is, that was by, you know, touch by touch, contact by contact, um, that I ended up and decided to uh, to follow the youth activities and um, and so I did uh, sport activities. I enrolled to yoga classes, to meditation classes with the uh, with Omani people, and I tried my best to escape from you know the the, the worst and, and the expatriate environments. But um, as you put it, the, the, the last question: Would this be possible in other Gulf countries? I'm I'm not sure, and this is also because of the very topic of uh, our discussion, that the, the country of Oman is, um, is much less, uh, let's say, compartmentalized in terms of uh, national identities for the other reason that there is, there is much less uh, um, people from uh, uh, representing other uh, nationalities. So um, this, it, it changes a lot, of, actually, it changes a lot of things. Thank you. Uh, we have a question now by uh, Ahmed El Mukheni. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity, and thank you, Marion, for a very interesting uh, walkthrough of your time and your observation, Oman. Um, I would like to perhaps touch upon what I call uh, as social schizophrenia, in a particular, particularly between Omanis living in Muscat with roots in. Um, the interior or outside Muscat and how they maintain, uh, as you said, a foot in each camp uh, uh, in that regard. Uh, uh, my interest perhaps is in the dynamics of uh, finding uh, a partner, a spouse, uh, a wife or a husband. Uh, I had some uh, access to some data which suggested that for some time, uh, higher education institutions provided an avenue for boys and girls, men and women, to find their uh, future uh, spouses. And that was later uh, uh, supplanted or uh, replaced by the workplace as an opportunity to find their uh, spouses, to actually fall into love and find somebody maybe from a pragmatic perspective or uh, on a love basis. Uh, my question perhaps is, to what extent you have been able to observe uh, this dynamic 
and to observe uh, that the workplace now uh, to an extent is providing this opportunity for uh, men and women, particularly young ones, to uh, meet each other and develop their partnership, their uh, marriage, I mean. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ahmed. Um, this is, of course, the limitation of my methodology. <laughs> so indeed, I could not um, enter too many workplaces or even uh, universities or campuses. So I was, uh, I was observing the public aspect of the public um, uh, side of, uh, of all this uh, happens uh, around there. So actually, uh, but I, I am not sure if your question is, is about the methodology or, uh, or in more depth content. So, but anyway, so if it's in terms of- uh, It was about the content. Have you seen, have you, um, have you seen uh, in your discussion, uh, did you see uh, somebody mentioning that uh, they've met this person or they hope to meet uh, somebody during their workplace who would become their uh, you know, husband, future husband, future a wife or something like this? Yes, 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 and, and uh, totally, and, uh, and then as a consequence, completely uh, breaking, the, um, breaking the confidence between the family back uh, in the countryside and, um, and themselves, and more particularly, again, for, for girls, uh, as they would probably, probably be uh, promised to someone uh, back there in the countryside from the family, from the family or not. Uh, but this is what, what happens, yeah. Sorry, uh, so we, we seem to have some technical difficulties with uh, one member of the audience who wanted to ask a question. So uh, Dale Eckelman will be taking his place. Can you ask a question? And MEJF, when uh, your technical issues are solved, it will be your turn. So Dale first. Dale, can you open your mic? Yes, opening my microphone might help. Thank you. Uh, uh, my question relates to uh, the what happens when you have cosmopolitanism meeting what you've already described as family pressures and regional pressures. Uh, several years ago, uh, four years ago, at the University of Nizwa, I uh, uh, met with a, a table ronde of women uh, because I find it easier to speak in uh, groups with people rather than one-on-one, -on -one, which would be suspect given my gender. And, uh, the, and uh, 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 one woman from the Batina uh, explained that she was offered a job at a bank, which at that time was unusual because it's hard to get white collar work as we would call it. And um, uh, she said the reason was that one uncle not living with her or anything or living with her uh, immediate family objected to her being anywhere where she would be mixing with men. And, um, and uh, to a little bit of my surprise, women from elsewhere saw, of course, the nearby areas of Nizwa as well, uh, were saying uh, the same thing, that they recognized that they had to persuade their extended family or key people in their extended family uh, 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 that it was okay to accept jobs uh, of a certain sort. Uh, to what ex that's the sort of situation that I think would probably be changing relatively fast, but I'm not sure. Uh, in the time that you were doing work, would you see any move away from the necessity of dealing with extended family, uh, brothers, uncles, uh, and so forth before one could accept a job offer. Thank you, Dale. Um, regarding the extended family uh, role in, in this kind of stories, I couldn't answer, answer to you, um, but what I could see is kind of the same phenomenon and not only in the Batina, but also in Dakhiliya. 
um, many girls, so for, for the record, I stayed for one month in this girl I described in the Dakhiliya, in her house, in her family. So that was very short of field work, but uh, that's, uh, that's uh, my source of information. Uh, what could I, I could have seen is that most of the girls would study um, at Nizwa University or in Muscat um, education or languages so that they can become teachers. Uh, and the main reason most of them were always repeating is that we will become teachers so that we are not in environments that in environments that would be uh, uh, mixed gendered and we would be with children. So we wouldn't have uh, the, the opportunity to meet men. Uh, regards the, the woman who wanted to travel to Muscat for work or for, um, for study offers, um, this is pretty much the same as what you described actually. And sometimes in a very, uh, um, in very high levels of, uh, of anger and, uh, and um, like really breakdown between these girls and, and their family back in the countryside. Thank you very much. Our next question uh, will be from uh, M-E-J-F. Um, I don't have a complete name. Uh, can you open your mic and present yourself? If it works, because you were experiencing some technical difficulties, M-E-J-F. Okay, so if this is still not working, then I will uh, ask uh, Abdullah al Mahani, uh, if you are with us, to ask your question. Good afternoon uh, from here, from Muscat. Uh, this is Abdullah al Mahani, Human Studies Center, Sultan Qaboos University. Uh, thank you, Frederick, and thank you, Lauren, for this kind invitation. And thanks for uh, Maria as well for her very nice presentation, I would call. And I can feel uh, the hard work that she put in uh, this research, which uh, took uh, quite long time actually. And I'm happy to, to hear uh, all this information about um, Oman. Uh, I might start with the Dale question when he asked about uh, the, mix, uh, the mixing in the mixed environment, uh, I would say uh, this um, uh, intention or this culture is declining here in Iran uh, these years and people are willing and welcoming uh, working with the other gender as uh, uh, equal gender you know, rights you know, is increasing uh, dramatically and, uh, in the recent uh, years. My question is, um, what, is, uh, what are the conclusions that you come uh, from uh, your study? Uh, if you have uh, some in which you know, can uh, enrich uh, you know, about uh, our society. And uh, I just want to add as well, uh, regarding you know, uh, male students and female students uh, in SKU, uh, male students, are, they don't have uh, any dormitory inside SKU they have to live outside and they will receive uh, a certain allowances to help them. I mean, certain cash, you know, from the university so that they can make, they can make their arrangements outside. Female students, they have to, they have to stay uh, on campus uh, so that, you know, this is one difference. So I would love to, to hear some recommendations of your study. Thank you very much. Thank you, Abdullah. Um, well, actually, about the notion of cosmopolitanism, it's a, it's a question I, I am willing to talk about now with all of you. Um, this was not the way I framed uh, my work, because again, this was about uh, love issues. Uh, if you want to know my conclusions about uh, love issues, I would say that uh, um, what was happening, uh, at least between 2013 uh, to 2017, is the introduction and, and even the invitation and promotion of uh, feelings, <laughs> uh, feelings, tenderness, and, um, and uh, and new ways of uh, dealing between the partners into the marriage uh, as promoted 
um, at SQU, for example, with the workshops uh, from, the, from the student associations and from the psychological center, for example, uh, workshops that uh, develop ideas as such uh, by um, promoting closeness uh, between the family members and between the partners and the spouses, so that also to cope and to find solutions to deal with the um, relations with the family in laws, for example. Um, and then regarding youth, um, this was also <laughs> complementary to my research. Uh, but what was uh, kind of uh, disturbing in the environment of Muscat is uh, that, like in, in difference with the difference of the other uh, Gulf countries, you cannot uh, just uh, simplify the observation with the national identities, for example, and. Um, and in Muscat, more particularly, everything is being reframed at the very moment of the interaction. I, what I want to mean by that is that when people would talk to each other, they are really positioning themselves like, oh, what is your family name? Oh, okay. And then you would change, uh, you would see uh, the way people, for example, change the way they talk, uh, the tone of their voice, whatever. So this, these elements were um, intriguing and um, still, uh, still in progress to be observed, I would say. Thank you. Our next question will be from Laura Christman. Laura, you can open your mic. Um, I have a question about the fact that the young Omanis go often home for weekends. And I um, also have research on Oman and I spoke to young Omanis too. And um, it was a little bit like um, difficult for them to, to go home for weekends because they have uh, in the capital another lifestyle, a more cosmopolitan lifestyle. And then when they go home, um, it's like, um, yes, different. And um, what is your experience about this um, mobility and local identity maybe? Uh, for young Omanis, how do they experience the weekends home with their cosmopolitan background from the capital? Thank you, Lara, and I will be interested to see your work. <laughs> um, yes, the weekend was felt as kind of a constraint, uh, indeed, as I described, either for the boys, uh, because they were responsible of their sisters or cousins, female cousins, but uh, also for the girls. And in, the, in addition, um, some of those that I followed, so I would have known them uh, in Muscat, and then I would have uh, occasion to go into the countryside. I went to Liwa, for example, with this uh, family. So I would follow them sometimes in, in, their, uh, in their countryside. Um, what was making it even more a constraint was that um, they would go uh, back in the family for speaking about marriage. And for speaking about who you're going to marry, uh, let's organize the marriage, um, and all these details that, that as you said, were something that is not part anymore of their life when they are in Muscat, uh, which would tend uh, to them to, to associate also for the very topic of marriage, something as a constraint and something that they cannot even um, uh, accumulate with the idea, with the experience of Muscat. Thank you. Thank you. I will be uh, asking a question by Philippe Petria because his microphone is not reliable. So uh, he is uh, wondering about the students who are engaged in couples and uh, those students from rural origins. Do they always plan to stay in Muscat are there couples or partners who once married elaborate plans to move to back to the rural regions or are planning to go abroad? In other words, what are the frontiers of their cosmopolitan imagination? Is it an urban frontier? Is it a global frontier? Yeah, thank you, Philippe, for the question. It, it's helping understanding to what extent cosmopolitanism is, it can be applied to Muscat. Uh, indeed not uh, the idea of traveling abroad, maybe in the more, let's say, liberalized um, uh, classes and milieus, they would do that uh, for a short period. For example, when one of them would um, 
come back to, to the studies, like in my mind, I have the example of uh, a couple I, I know they traveled to England because the wife uh, uh, came back for, uh, for to university to, to study. Uh, so they went there together, but it, it was considered as, a, it's considered as a, a short time. Uh, but once those who are in couple and want to settle, um, they would consider mascot indeed. Um, but also like the example I, I described, um, they would either go to, well, most of the time, the, the husband place. But then this would mean that the changes are more on the part of the girl again, uh, because they would be the one who would, after discovering Muscat, uh, falling in love and, and other things, then uh, go to another region. So it adds uh, an extra, uh, an extra experience and an extra um, a discovery in, in their life uh, course. But indeed, the frame, the, the frame is the borders of the country. Uh, yes. Thank you. I'm going to take the advantage of being MC to ask two questions. Um, my first is, uh, at a point in your talk, you explained, uh, in the case of this wedding where um, the groom and uh, the wife uh, were from different regions and confessions, and you explained that a uh, meeting in Muscat was a way to realize and experience the otherness within the Omani um, society, that they derive this realization of otherness from their pragmatic experience. What I wanted to know is, did you observe the opposite of this? Meaning that people are already aware of otherness, even if they haven't actually encountered the other. And did you actually feel that sometimes meeting students, whether male or female, that are coming from different regions and different either ethnic uh, or communitary origins is a way of reducing the feeling of otherness, of realizing that the other is kind of closer to us than we could have imagined. I don't have concrete example in my mind, but it sounds very um, applicable to what I observed. Um, yes, very nice insight, but I, I don't know what to answer, but, um, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was a tricky one. <laughs> yeah, you're kind of, a, and it's very uh, tiring to be answering all this, uh, all, all those questions. Okay. My second question, was uh, you described Oman as a very endogamic uh, society. And the fact that meeting in Muscat is sort of reducing this endogamic um, dimension of the society. Is this something that is only observed by experience or is it also a matter of debate? Um, something that is discussed in the press, something to discuss as a public issue that we are an endogamic society and maybe we could become less endogamic or is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Is this something that is debated among manis? Mm, I don't really know concretely. What I would say is that um, what you would more find on TV or magazines or on the internet or popular uh, news uh, is the idea of nationality, but not that of, um, of a region, not that of ethnic, not that of uh, religion. But in a sense, it's redistributing the way people would, um, as, I, as I wanted to say, actually, uh, it's redistributing the way people would associate a region to an ethnic, to a tribe, and so on and so on. But on the part of, of the public discourses, uh, narratives, um, I would say it's more on the, on the level of the nation. Thank you very much for this answer. For this answer. I think Laura Sapp will have the final question and then um, you, <laughs> we can call today. <laughs> Laura, can you uh, ask the final question? 
Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Marion. But uh, it's always great to hear you talk about your work. Um, I have a question that kind of follows up on Philippe's question on the on this cosmopolitan imagination, uh, sort of, because you talked about um, you know the creation of uh, national others, which I think is a process that exists in all Gulf countries, but Gulf countries, but always sort of targeting a different group in each country, which is kind of uh, kind of interesting to witness. But I was wondering on a broader level, how much is this, um, or do the youth you've met actually talk about uh, a sort of Omani exceptionality? Or do they, how, how is their imagination precisely shaped by reference to or by contrast with other Gulf countries? Like for example, I, I was not seeing recent, recently how in many Saudi cultural productions, Abu Dhabi and Dubai seem to be sort of a very aspirational uh, space for many uh, Saudi creatives, you know, and it's always sort of discussed in, uh, in that way. I was wondering if that's the same for the young Muscadis or how does that, uh, how do the rest of the, of the peninsula uh, mm. uh, participate in their imaginations? Uh, on the basis of uh, productions, like youth productions or um, video clips and uh, YouTube uh, channels, they they would indeed emphasize on the Omani uh, part and the Omani dimension of their daily life and, and their own um, cultural, musical, video productions. Um, but there would always be that kind of uh, shadow uh, from more from the Emirates, sorry, sorry for Saudi Arabia, but more from the Emirates, uh, that is the place where everything happens. Um, and that they consider as a cosmopolitan. Uh, because they, they, they would go there to, uh, to, to escape from, from the quiet uh, environment, the too quiet uh, environment of Muscat, uh, even if they, these would be um, um, people from the countryside living in Muscat, the Emirates in Dubai remain the, the reference for whatever happens uh, uh, for them. I actually have a follow-up question to that. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to overwhelm you, but um, have you met any working youth? That is, I was thinking about how this also sense of, you know, the UAE being a more cosmopolitan place or this question of mixing when uh, with the mobility that goes with university might also differ for young people who become taxi drivers, for example. Or who, because I guess that's one of the main differences that I see between Oman and, and the UAE, you know, that nationals actually do mix in the professional work at more various levels than they do in, uh, in the UAE. And so I, I was wondering about that. So if I reconstruct your, if I understand well, uh, <laughs> uh, you will tell me if I'm, if I'm right, um, in what context uh, people would meet uh, in terms of national differences? No, I was thinking about how these um, thinking about cosmopolitanism or about, uh, you know, what urban life produces in Muscat might differ between sort of working youth or people who have already joined the workforce, in particular at the sort of lower skilled professional levels, um, by comparison with the students, for example. Mm, I think I, I got it. <laughs> uh, and I would say that, uh, of course, um, once they arrive uh, in the job market, they have more occasion to deal with people with a, a much more uh, bigger otherness. Uh, because as I said, uh, universities don't, um, don't host much uh, foreign students. And again, this would be people with scholarships and they would stay for the uh, four or five years of their studies. Um, and, uh, and yes, and, and there is also a big question uh, about either you would uh, uh, you would enter in the job market through the private or the public sectors, because according to each one, you would find more foreigners, and then you would have uh, uh, a less, uh, let's say, comfort or a safe zone. Uh, and if you are in the private sector, you would have uh, more. Um, no, sorry, it's the opposite. <laughs> if you if you enter in the public sector, you you then will be with the more Omani people. Uh, but then this is a, another matter of financial issues that make them um, trying to to enter into the, the private sectors. But again, these are less uh, appreciated because of uh, of the very presence of uh, of foreigners. Thank you very much, Marion. 
um, maybe we'll have just uh, not a last question, but remarks made by uh, Ahmed al, uh, al Mukheni, uh, saying that ethnocentrism is a common feature of Gulf country nations, uh, of Gulf countries, as they seek to formulate their unique identities. And he adds that um, Omani identity or Omani particularism is often celebrated in public discourse and at times undermined in private discourse. There is almost a moral obligation to highlight Omani exceptionalism, um, says Ahmed. Maybe you want to have a last reaction to this remark? Uh, no, but thank you. But just what you were saying, so what you were saying about what Ahmed said <laughs> is that ethnocentrism by, by definition is also universal. So yes. But, but yeah, it was uh, very uh, good to know. Thank you very much to everybody. And we will be uh, meeting quite soon for another D1, which will be in Quranic studies with uh, Professor uh, Frédéric Imbert. Uh, thank you everyone for this session and thank you very much Marion for this um, exceptionally interesting <laughs> talk on Omani youth. Have a good thank afternoon you. everybody. <laughs>